It's unboxing time. All right, let's have some fun taking stuff out of a box. Hey everybody, ready to have some fun cutting stuff open? The old pocket knife. I've got a box here. You can't see it from there, but it says Toman on it. You know what that means. And you already know what's in here because the thumbnail and the title. Uh, <laughs> I got some more Harley Benton guitars. I guess I don't really need to cut this. It's a, a staple sort of situation. Um, geez. I feel like I'm doing this really awkwardly. There's one. There's the other. Just a little bit of battle damage in shipping. Um, I'm not surprised. This thing has been shipping for like two months or something. Uh, I ordered these a long time ago. Um, but the, you know, the world the way it is right now, I can't be too upset. I'm not upset at all, honestly. <laughs> so what do I have here? We'll start with this one. Apparently there were some major shipping issues, you know, with COVID and everything else. Some other people I was working with over in Germany and Europe in general were like, yeah, I'm sending this. Who knows when it'll get there? And it, it took quite a while for some of that stuff. Here we go. Hold that up for you guys to see. The overhead cam's a little bit useless right now, but let's adjust that. All right, what we have here is their single cut style, Les Paul sort of thing. The very first Harley Benton I ever did a video of, I think, at the uh, the first Toman Gearhead University that I attended. I was impressed with it then. Two years later, we'll see how I feel about it now. Comes with your obligatory cheap set of cables that you should probably throw away if you have other cables. This is, if this is your first guitar, then you're gonna use this cable until you realize how bad it probably is. I love these fun stickers. In case of emergency, rescue my guitars. They used to have one that said, in case of fire. Maybe they thought that was too, uh, <laughs> too upsetting for some people. So let's see what we've got here. I mean, it is what you would expect. Double cut style. Honestly, a pretty shimmery top on this. I'm a little bit shocked by that. There's quite a bit of a flame to that moving around. You know, on first inspection, the uh, the finish and everything looks very clean. I like this because it's got push bowls for coil splits or coil cuts. They call it coil tapping on here. It's I don't think that's what they mean. It's not a coil tap. It's a coil split or coil cut. Fight it out in the comments. These are a shocking value. They're like under 200 bucks. Vintage style tuners on there. The inlay work looks fairly clean, especially for the price point. <laughs> in previous videos with other guitars, I've uh, discovered inlays where the uh, the glue channel around the inlay is hilariously large. All right, let's put this to the side and we'll open up the other one so we can know what we're working with. And then I'll set up and start playing both guitars. I've been needing a Les Paul style guitar in my quiver for quite a while because I've had nothing that kind of fills that role. I'm such a uh, Fender-style oriented player 
as far as my love of guitars go. And I just don't have anything like that. Oh boy, <laughs> I'm excited for this one. So I fell in love with the prototype of this at the last Toman Gearhead University. And it just took me a while to get around to asking for one, but it's been in the back of my head ever since. And, uh, you know, I, I wrote them and asked for this as soon as it became available and had sold out really quick. And they offered me a different color. I was like, no, no, I gotta have this color. Also, this color is the one that came or comes with the baked maple neck. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so sparkly. The Silver Sparkle Fusion. Dark, dark baked maple neck. This is basically their attempt at doing an Ibanez AZ sort of concept. Wilkinson Bridge on there. Nickel hardware, pickups, knobs, whatnot. Coil cut switch. Truss adjustment down here at the heel. Glossy headstock. Locking tuners. Comes with a Graftech tusk nut. They really went for it with this guitar. Uh, a lighter wood binding on the edge here. A little bit of a cut in the heel there for a little bit nicer front axis for your hand. They even have nickel hardware on the uh, jack plate here. You know I love sparkle. I mean, anything sparkly catches my eye. I'm like, a, like an ostrich or a peacock. Are those birds that care about sparkly? <laughs> I think they are. Mmm. It's the kind of a Wilkinson wiggle stick that has the threads inside of it and you push it down and it couples onto it that way. I've got to clean some stuff up around here and then I'm going to set up and uh, play these guitars. All right, let's start with this single cut here. I think it's called the uh, HB SC450 Plus or something like that, some sort of code name. Woefully out of tune because, of course, it's fresh out of the box. Tuners feel decent quality, pretty smooth, no issues there. This thing feels, you know, the weight that it looks. It's doing the thing <laughs> that this style of guitar does as far as its weight and physical presence. I've got nothing on, but I've got my uh, gigging pedal board down in front of me. Um, yeah, let's try it clean for a little bit. A less Paul style guitar with coil cuts with a single coil tone. You know I'm into that. It's 
still sounds like it needs to be dialed in a little bit as far as intonation or maybe tuning. A little bit of grit to those frets. They aren't a mirror polished fret. But this is, as far as I remember, a sub $200 guitar before shipping. I mean, uh, you know, shipping is crazy these days. Um, it used to be 30 bucks to get two guitars shipped from Toman. People are telling me all sorts of different numbers now. I don't know. Depending on when you're watching this, go check out the current numbers. If it's worth it to you, if it's, if it's worth it to you. If it's not worth it to you, then it's not worth it to you. Say right off the bat, I'm impressed with the sound. Let's check the tuning real quick. It's actually pretty dang close tuning wise. Uh, I just checked the intonation at the second fret because I've had issues in the past with cheap guitars having nuts that are cut too high and the note actually pulls out a tune when you fret uh, at those lower frets. It's spot on. Um, it could go a little bit sharper at the 12th fret. So I could do a little bit of tweaking, but it's not bad. It really is not um, compared to all sorts of other guitars that I've played in the past. Here's the middle setting, all humbuckers. Bridge single. And neck single. Neck single with bridge humbucker. A single just makes it sparkle. Single coils make everything sound better. It's my opinion. Let's try some drive. This is uh, the True North Tweed drive. I've been using this a lot. I really like this pedal. say it uh my first impressions with this guitar are really good i like the sound of the pickups i like the way it feels that's kind of a unique neck shape that's something i've commented on harley benton's before is uh i mean you look at them and you think you're going to be getting something that's you know trying to be a reproduction of what it looks like and in a lot of ways it is doing that flavor of thing, but the neck shapes on Harley Benton's tend to be kind of unique and they kind of tend to have this like Harley Benton feel to them that I don't mind at all. It's not, it doesn't feel like a compromise. It feels like buying into just a different brand, you know? I mean, clearly these things are made, you know, budget mindedly. They're not a fully premium guitar. The frets are gritty. They could be dressed a little bit softer on the edges. They are not biting into my hand at all, but they're definitely not a premium fret. The headstock is ugly. <laughs> I've said that before. I hate that headstock shape. Um, just this weird, non-committed, bumpiness on the end there. I'm not a fan of. Let's go for a high gain sound with the Rev G4. <laughs> 
Something on the wall behind me is shaking. I can hear it rattle. <laughs> impressed I really am I'm excited to have this uh, as part of my quiver um, I full disclosure one of the reasons why I ordered this is uh, Toman put me on um, an updated affiliate program where I get to see what people are buying uh, not which people but what they're buying and by a landslide this is the most popular selling guitar through my affiliate links. Um, so I figured I might as well have one if it's so popular, uh, especially considering I'd only videoed this thing once. It's just, I think it's a no brainer uh, bargain. Let me look at the price real quick so I can have the price in mind when I'm saying that. I just, I know it was the cheapest guitar on this order. It was under 200 euros. I wonder what the dollar amount is. Harley Benton SC 450 plus LD vintage in stock, 180 US dollars. You gotta figure out shipping on top of that, but this thing's gonna get to you. This thing <laughs> is gonna get to you well under 300 bucks. I think it plays really nice and I think it sounds pretty great for under 300 bucks. For, that's for the U.S. buyers. For those of you in Europe, it's uh, 159 euro. I can't believe it. I, how are they making a profit on these things? And I'm not saying that this thing is comparable to a USA Gibson or anything like that. The thing that I say often about Harley Benton is that they tend to punch about $200 above their weight class. So call this a $300 guitar. I could easily compare this to a $500 guitar and be like, oh yeah, they're, they're really close in quality control and playability. You take a, a $200 Harley Benton, it's going to compare really well to a $400 anything else. You take a $400 Harley Benton, it's going to compare really nice to a six or $700 anything else. Like they're, they're just, they just tend to be about $200 under 
what they could be if they were from, you know, a big brand. There's something kind of fun about an auto-tune guitar, right? jumbo frets on this decently rounded on the edge but doing that kind of like tactile thing where you can feel the edge of the fret it's not sticking out it's not biting it's just you can feel it you know what I mean there's just different styles of fret dressing where the frets on this are more hidden behind the edge of that binding clearly like I said earlier it's trying to do the Ibanez AZ feel it has a very similar neck. Ne it has a very similar neck feel to it. Feels comfortably fast, but not like an insane sort of wizard neck. That smooth, baked maple, kind of lightly oiled sort of feel. I'm sure it's not oiled. I'm sure it's some sort of very thin poly coating on there. Strangely, I don't like the cut tone on this as much as I do. <laughs> out of the single cut here. It sounds a little bit anemic for my taste. Plenty of twang though. Maybe that's the way I need to think about it as being twangy. The humbucker setting is a little, you know, a little bit dark for me. Here's the neck pickup. Interesting that I preferred the pickups in the single cut. They're both pickups from Roswell. A little bit of pull on that bridge. Um, I bet I can tighten it to be all the way locked down without issue. There's just a little bit. I prefer my bridge to rest ever so slightly on the body. And this isn't floating so high that that would be impossible. It actually feels like it's blocking off and pressing against something inside the body. The route or whatnot. So yeah, I think I pull that all the way back without issue, without having to reset action or intonation or anything like that. It seems really smooth. Hit it with a little bit of reverb. Check out the surfability of this. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm not feeling it ping or ting out of tune at all. I'm abusing that bar fairly decently. I'm sure I could use a little bit of help now, but that was pretty good. Only one string needed to be adjusted and it was just slightly off. The D was a little bit off. I was diving that pretty decent. 
How much is this? This is the Fusion. It's the Fusion 2. There's the bullet. There it is. 379. So does my theory apply here? For 379 US, does this compare to a $579, a $600 guitar? I keep comparing it to the Ibanez AZs, which start at like 1200 So double that. I think the, the quality on the AZs is, is quite a bit higher as far as fret ends go and things of that nature. Um, but I think for 600 bucks, if this was a name brand guitar, no one would have any problem with it. A little bit of irregularity in the finish up here on the top edge, but who's even gonna notice that? It just looked like there's a little bit of like a pressure ding scratch sort of thing in the finish. I mean, for 400 bucks, I think these have stainless steel frets. Stainless steel frets. Let's try it with some drive. I've been doing surfy stuff. This guitar looks like it wants to be high gain, right? Playing just nonsense right now. The mix on that delay was pretty rich. <laughs> I'm not playing great today. Not that I ever really play amazing, um, but I'm pretty damn impressed with this. Um, I'm gonna say for for my personal tastes, this is in the top two of just builds from Harley Benton. Uh, the second. is the BM-75, clearly like a Brian May sort of thing. Uh, you know, hardcore Brian May fans will point out that you can't get the switching settings that you need in stock condition with this. I don't care. I'm not actually a huge Brian May fan. I just really like this guitar. It sounds really great. It plays really great. The quality control on it and just the build quality, I think is, is really wonderful. Um, I know it's a harder sell for what is a house brand 
what is perceived as a budget brand to go for the higher end guitars from the range. And that's what this is. I think this is like a $300 Harley Benton or like 350 or something like that. And this is getting close to $400. But between these two, I think these are really solid builds. I need a place to put this. Um, I sold the original Fusion that I had, the original Harley Benton Fusion, the one with the, uh, <laughs> the bathroom tile, uh, super flat quilt on it. Uh, I sold that because one, Harley Benton wasn't carrying it anymore. Toman wasn't carrying it. Uh, they discontinued that model and went for the Fusion 2s that have the Wilkinson Bridge instead of a Floyd Rose. I don't miss the Floyd Rose at all. I don't have any other Floyd Rose guitars in my collection now, and I'm fine with that. This thing seems totally tuning stable. It's got the stainless steel frets. It's got a look I much, much, much prefer. That sparkle, you know I like that. Even the 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 nickel brushed kind of look on the hardware, I think is really fun. I much prefer the feel of this neck. That baked maple feel. I need more baked maple in my life. It's a really great, satisfying feel. Like I, I was never really big into like the sanded down raw feeling necks. And technically this has that, but it's more of a satiny feel to me. There's even a little bit of a flame. I don't know if you can see that on the fretboard itself. Pretty wonderful. Kind of subdued black dots here that blend into it from a distance. Just a very handsome guitar. I should have I should have ordered one of these earlier. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I sold I sold the last one, uh, and I'm not sad, and I'm very happy to have this one. Um, it's not fully my style, but I mean it totally gets me places I like to go, um, and I really enjoy playing it. So there you go. That's that's my take on this, and uh, a little bit of thoughts on this before I go on the single cut. This is gonna give me permission to sell this. I think this is a great guitar. They're semi hollow here. But I have another semi hollow in my life that I'm in love with. The Squire Starcaster has become my go-to semi-hollow. And it's very untraditional in its construction versus other semi-hollows. But this is the one that I grab when I'm going to grab a semi-hollow. I don't need a ton of semi-hollows in my life. Um, so yeah, I'm going to end up putting this on the used market here locally. I'm not going to ship it to anyone. It's just not worth, uh, you know, hassling with the shipping. And I'm, I know it'll sell locally. So sorry everyone who's, you know, furiously typing to make me offers right now. Um, Still a great guitar, but yeah, it's become a bit redundant in my collection. And I've honestly been trying to have a, uh, a one in one out sort of <laughs> concept here. Otherwise I'll die underneath a pile of guitars. I sold the fusion. I got this. I got the single cut. I'm selling this. That's the way it's going to work. So let's do a little bit of a goodbye to this and give it a few strums play out. And uh, then you know what? Stay grounded. <laughs> like, dislike, leave me rude, nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt. Click the links. I use affiliate links through Toman. So even if you don't buy these, click the links and then go buy something else. Buy strings. You know, if Toman is the retailer that you use. <laughs>